A reading from the book of Sirach. Now I will praise those godly men, our ancestors, each in his own time. These were godly men whose virtues have not been forgotten. Their wealth remains in their families, their heritage with their descendants. Through God's covenant with them, their families endures, their posterity for their sake. And for all time, their progeny will endure. Their glory will never be blotted out. Their bodies are peacefully laid away, but their name lives on and on. At gatherings, their wisdom is retold, and the assembly proclaims their praise. Verbum Domini. God will give him the throne of David, his father. God will give him the throne of David, his father. The Lord swore to David a firm promise from which he will not withdraw. Your own offspring I will set upon your throne. God will give him the throne of David, his For the Lord has chosen Zion. He prefers her for his dwelling. Zion is my resting place forever. In her will I dwell, for I prefer her. In her I will make a horn to sprout forth for David. I will place a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon him my crown shall shine. Lectio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matthäum. Gloria Domine. Jesus said to his disciples, Blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but do not see it, and to hear what you hear, but do not hear it. Verbum Domini. The substance of who we are, to a very large degree, is a result of our upbringing, how we were loved, guided, and taught by the family that surrounded us during the formative years of our infancy and our youth. 
for most of us, the most important members of the family in this formation are our parents, our father and mother, and perhaps our grandparents, our grandmother and our grandfather. Now, in our veneration and devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, it may be possible for us to so concentrate on the divine graces, the phenomenal divine graces that God bestowed upon her, that we may forget that in all aspects, other than original sin, Our Lady was just like us. She lived within a family. She was educated and raised by parents, and those parents became the grandparents of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And today, we celebrate the memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, our New Testament Gospels and the letters contain no information about this holy couple, but other documents called apocryphal literature, writings that do not have the same authority as the Bible, but are tradition or in tradition or believed to be truths or contain certain elements of truth, provide some very interesting and useful details. A, par- a primary apocryphal source about Saints Joachim and Anne is derived from the Proto-Evangelium of James, I believe written in the early second century. It's attributed to one of the apostles, James Celeste, but the authorship is debated by many scholars. But the story in the Proto-Evangelium relates that Joachim was a wealthy member of one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And both he and his wife Anne were deeply distressed because they were childless. They devoted themselves to very rigorous prayer and to fasting. And after years of waiting for a child, an angel appeared to them separately with the good news that their desire for a child would be fulfilled. So Joachim and Anne were chosen by God to conceive and raise the mother of our Redeemer and to have the privilege of being the grandparents of our Savior Jesus, thus participating in the great mystery of our salvation. It was in the home of these two holy people where the Blessed Virgin was educated and raised and introduced to God's word and the word that she responded to generously each day and that one day she would be as she would conceive by the Holy Spirit. And most likely it was at their home in Nazareth that the incarnation took place. And as Mary welcomed the descent of the Holy Spirit upon her in this way, so too did Joachim and Anne welcome God's word in their hearts and into their homes. Now our readings for today's memorial conveys the messages so applicable to Mary's parents. In a reading from Sirach, our attention is drawn to the covenant God made to the ancestors of Israel. And through this covenant, the family of godly endures, their fidelity and virtues are not forgotten. Their glory will never be blotted out, their names lives on and on and they were praised in the assembly long after they pass away. All of this applies to Saints Joachim and Anne. Their descendants, Mary the new Eve, and Jesus the new Adam, endure forever. And we honor within our liturgical assembly the parents of Mary. In our psalm today, taken from Psalm 132, focuses our attention on the covenant promise that God swore to King David, the promise that one of David's descendants would reign without end. Your offspring I will set upon your throne. God is faithful, always faithful to his promise. Jesus Christ is the son of David, the son of Mary, the grandson of Joachim and Anne, and his kingdom is without end. The apocryphal sources do not record if Saints Joachim and Anne ever saw Jesus. Remember that Joseph and Mary with the baby Jesus, as recorded in St. Matthew's Gospel, 
left in haste for Egypt after Jesus was born to avoid Herod's persecution. But it may be possible. They saw Jesus when the Holy Family returned from Egypt. What a blessing it would have been for them to see and hold the Son of God. As our gospel reading from St. Matthew proclaimed, blessed are your eyes because they see. Their eyes were blessed because perhaps they saw the child Jesus, the Son of God. So it was in the home of Saints Joachim and Anne where the Virgin Mary received her training to be the mother of God. And a holy family it must have been is evidenced by the strong character of Mary in making decisions, her continuous practice of prayer, her devotion to the laws of her faith, her steadfastness at moments of crisis, and her devotion to her relatives, all indications of a very close-knit, loving family, grounded in faith, grounded in belief in God. Saints Joachim and Anne are to be praised because it was they who passed on the faith and the law to Mary, which they had received from their parents. We remember them because they were good parents. We remember them because they're the grandparents of Jesus. They never worked a miracle, as far as we know, at least not of the kind that would amaze the crowds. They worked the miracle of family, lovingly embracing the responsibility to educate and to nurture their child, Mary, in the faith, and thus prepared her to be the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the celebration of the memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne emphasizes some very fundamental truths of our faith, the sacrament of marriage between one man and one woman that forms the foundation of the family. And the other truth is that the family is the foundational to the society of humankind. As our compendium of the social doctrine of the church states, enlightened by the radiance of the biblical message, the church considers the family as the first natural society with underived privileges that are proper to it and places it at the center of social life. Relegating the family to a subordinate or a secondary role, excluding it from its rightful position in society would be to inflict grave harm on the authentic growth of society as a whole. The family, in fact, is born of the intimate communion of life and love founded on the marriage between one man and one woman. It possesses its own specific and original social dimension in that it is the principal place of interpersonal relationships, the first and vital cell of society. The family is a divine institution that stands at the foundation of life of the human person as a prototype of every social order. In a saint Pope John Paul II once wrote, the family is the basic cell of society. It is the cradle of life and love, the place in which the individual is born, where the individual grows. Therefore, a primary concern is reserved for this type of community, especially in times when human egoism, the anti-birth campaign, totalitarian politics, Situations of poverty, material, cultural, and moral misery threaten to make these very springs of life dry up. Furthermore, ideologies and various systems, together with forms of uninterest and indifference, dare to take over the role in education proper to the family. The indifference that St. Pope John Paul II mentions can manifest itself within the family overworked or overachieving parents, or social agendas that block out times for families to interact and communicate. In modern technology, if not properly managed, all can lead to a family being a group of individuals living under the same roof, but not really being 
a family. That point was really brought home to me recently when I was traveling. I stopped at a restaurant for a meal, and right after I arrived and after I was seated, a family of four came in, mother, father, daughter, and son. They were seated just in front of me at a table. Throughout that whole meal, they virtually said not a word to each other. They were on these telephones, the smartphones, either texting or surfing the web or whatever they were doing on the telephones, but they were not communicating with one another. It didn't seem that it came to a point in the parents' minds that they say, put the phones away. Let's talk. Let's share a meal. Let's be in community. Let's be in communion. It is heartening in this day and age, at least here in the United States, that even the telephone companies are now putting out advertisements to say, put the telephones away, especially at mealtime. Be family. Be in communion. There are many attacks on the family today. There is much strife within our cultures worldwide that the family comprised of one man and one woman in covenant relationship of holy marriage as a social and spiritual unit, unit is under continual attack. Various manifestations of what family means within our cultures have seemed to have risen, but it doesn't take away the fundamental moral truth of what a family is. One man, one woman, married in holy matrimony, a sacrament, raising their children, teaching them and educating them in the ways of God. Thus, the veneration the saints Joachim and Anne take on a higher importance to remind us that from ancient times to the present, it is in the family that one learns the love and faithfulness of the Lord. It is in the family that children learn their first and important lessons of practical wisdom to which the virtues are connected. To take that away, to weaken it, to denigrate the family or the concept of it is to underpin the stability of our society, wherever that society may be in the world. And attached to that will be all the inherent woes that are and will be exhibited throughout the world. So today, as we venerate the memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, we remember that they form and help us to remind us of the underpinnings of our societies.